Creators must choose. Do they want to foster platforms that encourage freedom of thought, or do they want these large centralized institutions to dictate everything that we can say? I want to touch on something a little controversial. I thought it was worth mentioning Infowars and what's going on with uh, this chapter in social media history. Uh, for the first time ever, we're experiencing a purge of people that have disagreeable ideas on these platforms. And I kind of wanted to touch on it because I think that um, for me, there's only a couple reasons why you should be banned from a platform. They include the threat of violence or the threat of destruction of property or fraud. And I think Alex Jones probably falls under fraud. I don't know the efficacy of those supplements that he likes to peddle. So arguably, from my perspective, you probably could argue that he should be abolished from the platforms until he gets his advertising under control because there's a lot of scientism surrounding supplements and a lot of studies have shown that they're not quite as effective as people believe them to be. So in any case, that's not what happened to Alex Jones. What happened to Alex Jones was an ideological purge. And I think that that's incredibly dangerous. You know, we have the First Amendment in America to protect us against government encroachment on freedom of speech and freedom of thought, and the freedom to express yourself and the freedom to learn. Personally, I don't see why it's not okay for the government to do it, but it's okay for a very select few companies to behave in such a way to abolish certain ideas from platforms. Now that we've demonstrated that it's okay uh, broadly to kick certain people with ideas off of platforms, it becomes much easier to then purge others from the various social media platforms that we have uh, when those ideas that, that they might be espousing make us uncomfortable. As creators, it's really up to us to choose wisely where and how we're going to express ourselves. Clearly, the current institutions that we rely on to produce and distribute our material aren't in line with uh, freedom of speech. But I think that instead of trying to force these companies to make them behave in the way that we want, I think it's probably better that we build the platforms that we want in order, in order to compete with the current paradigm. So it's really incumbent upon artists to choose wisely where they're going to produce and, and share their art with. Now, YouTube is the biggest. So clearly, if we can, we should be promoting and publishing on YouTube. But there are other platforms. You have things like Library and Steam that I talk about quite frequently. Creative Chain's another creative platform. All these things are in early stages, but there are a couple that are m much more developed, like Minds.com and Steam which has DTube and DLive for streaming a video content. If we want to see changes in the platforms that we are using to produce and distribute our material, we need to be willing to walk away from the platforms that aren't treating us well. If you desire free speech or if you desire platforms that take copyright more seriously, it's important that you move to those platforms. We are still capable of voting with our feet on the internet. There is not one video distribution platform. YouTube's the biggest. Facebook isn't the only social media platform. It's definitely the biggest. I do think that you, you are going to witness a homogenization of thought on these platforms. So if we don't choose to move, then we don't really have much of an excuse when these other platforms dictate how and what we can say. It's incumbent upon us as filmmakers and as artists and as uh, commentators and raconteurs and political nut jobs or, and wonks to choose a platform that allows them to best speak freely. If YouTube knows that there's nowhere else to go, then they can do whatever they want. And according to this book that I read a while ago called The Starfish and the Spider, author Ori Braffman and Rod A. Beckstrom talk about the three different types of structures that institutions can uh, take. The first is centralized, where everything's all in one place, right? You have a decentralized, like uh, social networks like Diaspora, where there isn't a centralized node for the whole of all the networks. They're all completely decentralized. So I could start my own node on Diaspora and connect it to other nodes, but Diaspora cannot control who gets what nodes or who can open their own node. Then you have the hybrid. So social media companies and video distribution companies like YouTube have adopted the hybrid form of organizational structures. So you have the centralized corporate structure and the decentralized arm of it, which is us, the creators, right? What this author finds is that as centralized institutions suffer any kind of pushback or competition or 
a disruption that they tend to centralize more. Instead of allowing people of disparate opinions to uh, leverage the decentralization in order to put whatever they want on the system, YouTube is going to centralize control as to what is okay to be said on that system. So I don't think we're gonna see YouTube back off from this. I think that it's going to get worse. It appears to be the nature of centralized and semi-centralized institutions to further aggregate power onto itself. So in this case, YouTube's going to aggregate more control, more power over the language and ideas that can be spread on the platform. Decentralized institutions, you can't do that. So as a filmmaker and as an artist and, or as a political commentator, you probably should be looking at decentralized institutions and decentralized platforms. If you don't like YouTube, set up camp in these other, in the, on these other platforms to let YouTube know that there are competitors out there and that if, if you're not happy with it, you're gonna go there. If we don't choose the platforms that we want to see succeed, YouTube's going to dominate. And based on the information that I read in Starfish and the Spider, YouTube's going to aggregate more power and control over its users and the language that can be used and the ideas that can spread on its platform. It's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse. And I think the same thing is going to happen to all the other institutions. They're, they're all semi-decentralized, not totally. So that allows them to exert a great deal of control over the user base and the ideas that spread. So if political commentators and filmmakers and artists and controversial uh, figures want to protect themselves and to protect their liberties, it's important to choose institutions that are, are probably a little more decentralized. I recommend looking at library at lbry.io. We should check out Steam, Creative Chain, Minds.com, View.ly, pronounced Viewly. My favorite decentralized platform is Steam. In my mind, that's the winner. Creators must choose. Do they want to foster platforms that encourage freedom of thought, freedom of speech, or do they want to allow these large centralized institutions to dictate everything that we can say? I don't think we want that from the government, and I certainly don't think we want that from a handful of companies that could be taken over by people that we might disagree with. I mean, that's why we don't want governments dictating what speech, because what if somebody gets in there that's really evil, right? You don't want people in control of thought. Protect your material, protect your art. Talk to you later.